for today's video, VirtualBox is what we're using, and we're gonna go ahead and jump into it right now. Okay, after we add VirtualBox, either install it using your package manager, or you can download like the app image if, if you like. I prefer the installing it and getting the latest and greatest from the package manager. However, if you're like on a Debian and they're running an older version, you might think about just downloading the newest package or updating your PPA and downloading it there. But with that said, I'm not going to go over the actual install of VirtualBox just because it should be uh, pretty much straightforward at this point if you're going to enter virtualization on how to install programs. So you got VirtualBox, you pull it up, you have all your BIOS options set. I had some screenshots for AMD CPUs, but uh, obviously if you have an Intel CPU, uh, just make sure like VT-D is enabled along with IOMMU. So with that said, let's go ahead and create our Windows 10 machine. Um, I'm just gonna do the new option up at the top and select Windows 10 64-bit and we'll go ahead and put this in a folder i have a terabyte drive we want it there and we're going to just name this one win 10. Uh, for memory for windows i like to give it four gigs at a minimum i highly recommend four gigs unless you're doing like a windows xp instance because anything seven and above uh, it just is a dog with less than four gigs of memory um, create your virtual disk. I'm only going to give this one 50 gigs because I really don't, not going to use this virtualized instance very much except in very, very obscure circumstances. And here, if you were going to want to take this to other machines, I highly recommend switching this to VHD from VDI. Uh, VHD is just a little more uniform and you can import that into a variety of different things. So actually for today's video, I'm going to go ahead and leave it on VHD just because I know I can take that pretty much anywhere I need to go. So if I wanted to go to a different hypervisor um, on a different machine or maybe even import this into my farm I have on like Zen server, I could do that with a VHD rather easily where VDI is a little bit harder to do a conversion. Dynamically allocated, always choose that for the most part. Very rarely would you ever do fixed size because it immediately takes up all 50 gigs where dynamic just fills it up as you go along and now we have this so i like to go into settings afterwards and just kind of double check what we have a um, couple things i always disable floppy optical i leave um, processor and processors we're going to go ahead and give this four virtual cpus acceleration um, actually we're going to take this nested off i don't think we need that because we have this right here, which is good. And from here, we should be good to go. As far as storage, we need to make sure we point out whatever we're using for the CD-ROM. CD-ROM wise, we'll probably give 1809. I have a custom image with a lot of patches built in. I haven't updated it since October, or actually November, so um, we'll see how this one does. And with that, we're gonna hit okay and start our machine. Now, I know on like GNOME boxes, 1809 and 1803 have issues. So you have to go all the way back to 1709. Sometimes they'd have these uh, blue screen of deaths that you get during the setup process. VirtualBox, I find, is a little bit better at dealing with many of these newer in architectures from Windows or newer versions of Windows, where boxes and also uh, QEMU out of the box has some difficulties where you have to do tweaking to get some of the newer versions of Windows 10 working. So just know that if you do have issues and you're using something other than VirtualBox or you have blue screens, try an earlier version. 1709, I think I've always had good success with. I've never had an issue with it not loading on 1709. But with that said, uh, VirtualBox is you know my highest success rate out of pretty much any of the level two hypervisors here that run on top of Linux. I always choose custom and then I just hit enter. I don't even bother partitioning. I just let Windows do all that for the virtual machine. And it'll go ahead and do like a reserve partition and all, all of that business and I never have to worry about it. And this is also only seeing that 50 gig 
uh, drive we've created. So there's no big deal with actually just letting it do all the partitioning. Again, I don't really suggest you do anything crazy there unless you have some funky setup. All right, so now that we have this installed, it took about 20 to 30 minutes. You can actually speed this up by throwing more CPUs at it. I only gave it four CPUs, so that's probably why it was a little bit slow, but um, I'm just gonna go ahead and go through the traditional walkthrough and get all this aligned. Now, 1809 has kind of a funky setup. Windows did this thing to where I think Windows now is harder to set up than it was uh, to set up Linux or pretty much almost any Linux except maybe Arch because they made it to where you can't easily install a local account with adding like security questions and all kinds of stuff. So it's kind of a pain. They made it to where they want you to use a Microsoft account on pretty much every single install, which is just beyond asinine. But, you know, that's just Microsoft for you. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this part because I'm just gonna use my Microsoft account because it's a pain in the butt to do the offline account. And I just have a dummy old Hotmail account I use for this. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and speed up through this part. So the first thing you do whenever you install a virtual machine is you have to put the VM's guest tools or the virtualization tools on that virtual machine. It doesn't matter what hypervisor you're using, whether it's VirtualBox, whether you're using bare metal like a VMware or Zen server, or even a, a KVM or a QEMU if you're back in Linux. All these things have guest tools or hypervisor or virtualization tools. These tools are essential and have to be installed. Otherwise, you're just crippling yourself and running a very, very limited performance that you'll have with that virtual machine. So it's very important that you actually install these tools and that's what we're gonna do right now. So I just got to the desktop. I really haven't done anything with the system. All I've done is just logged in and set up my credentials. So with that done, we need to go in here and, oh my God, look at all that glorious bloatware. Wow. That is just a lot of crap. That's insane. Okay. Um, so, sorry, I got sidetracked there. We're going to install the guest edition CD image and get this up and going. All right, the CD is launched in the tray here, and we're going to go ahead and install this. So once our file explorer loads up, if it ever does. So you'll see in this really sluggish performance right now, and that is just completely normal, especially from a VM that's just, just fresh out of the box. One, Windows is downloading and just going crazy updating this instance, but also you have no actual guest tools installed, so it's actually pretty gimped in that regard as well. So we really want to get these going as soon as we can. So with this done, we should be able to launch this into the installer. After it is installed, we reboot, and from there we should have some pretty good performance. Any prompts during the actual installation of guest tools, just make sure you hit install. Uh, they'll be from Oracle or signed by Oracle, and that is who makes VirtualBox for this instance. If you're doing like QEMU, it'll say signed by Red Hat, and if you're doing like VMware, it'll say by, signed by VMware. So just good to know. And the other one I can think of is Citrix will actually be, uh, or Zen Server will be signed by Citrix. So that said, let's go ahead and reboot, and now our guest tools should be installed and on reboot. Um, you'll see the screen should be able to be adaptively uh, resized and the desktop will change the size with it. And you also see that sluggish behavior is completely gone as well. All right, we're back on the desktop. Let's go ahead and try and resize this and see what we get. And also, I also like to check to make sure yeah, there it goes. It went ahead and automatically resized, which is pretty cool. But also, let's check Device Manager in Windows just to make sure it's able to see everything we just did. Let's right-click on the Windows icon and then go to Device Manager and see what we have. 
Now, if we did this right, we shouldn't see any yeah, see, it's all good. But if you're starting to see anything with like an exclamation mark and it's yellow, you probably want to go in there and track down that device. Usually in, when it's a virtual machine like this, when you do those guest tools, it, it goes ahead and resolves all that just like it did on this machine. And you now you have that good performance or better performance than what it was out of the gate. So with all this done, you should now be able to run any programs, do all kinds of stuff. And VirtualBox, one thing I like about it is it actually has seamless mode to where you can actually drop and kill everything but like the start menu. Let's see what this does. So if we do host L, we can get back out and go back to Windows mode. Let's go ahead and switch. So seamless mode kind of gets rid of all the borders. So I'm still in here, but I'm also still in my Windows Desktop. So this is pretty cool. It's not perfect though, as you see, you see the background's a little bit off here. So if we just hold our host button and press L, it should go back into Windows mode. So this is Windows mode, which is pretty good. So now that we have our virtual machine all set up, we've kind of toyed around with uh, resizing. Now you can actually launch all your apps right here. Uh, as I kind of showed and illustrated, Simless Mode is not perfect. It's got little glitches here and there, but I would probably blank out my background, go to a more classic theme in Shell so you have no translucent behavior with the actual windows or any of that that pop up. That'll also cause issues if you're running Seamless Mode. I find doing a really basic theme with no translucent behavior helps a lot especially it kind of depends varies from Linux desktop to environment to desktop environment. So KDE definitely does not play nice with seamless mode as we just saw. So that was the actual install of Windows 10 on VirtualBox. Pretty easy in, as I said before, it was very intuitive. It was super easy to follow along with. The one thing I will say is if you're having problems with the guest additions tool, you can actually install that directly from your package manager. So if you're on a Debian based system, you can go to APT and go ahead and type VirtualBox, I think dash guest dash additions. And if you're on Arch based system, you can easily go into Pac-Man and do the same thing. So uh, no matter whatever distribution you're on, VirtualBox is a great choice. One thing I will say that I didn't touch on in this video is when you go to install VirtualBox, I like to always choose the DKM, um, not the Arch-based, if you're using an Arch-based system, add-on. So it just, uh, I had problems with that in the past. I didn't try it uh, in the past month or two. I always have just always default of the DKMS tool set. So uh, j just important to know when you do the pre-setup for this. So with that said, I'll see you in the next video.